Melissa and Aaron here, and I don't know if you guys have seen this yet, but it was just sent to us on Facebook, and we felt the need to discuss it with you all because I'm pretty creeped out. So if you're not familiar with the Georgia Guidestones, we're going to talk about them in just a second. But for those of you who are, check this out. Somebody went to the Guidestones, and there's been a change wow. on the English stone that has English on one side and Spanish on the other. A new block has been inserted in the corner right here and it has a date on it so it's a living monument <laughs> yeah it's and that changing. date just so happens to be 2014 now it says 2014 this is to my knowledge the first major addition to this monument since it was put up march 22nd 1980 i think we all need to discuss it that is seriously <laughs> That is foreboding and creepy. Okay, so the Georgia Guidestones. What this is is a monument that mysteriously showed up in Elbert County, Georgia on March 22nd, 1980 with 10 carved commandments, quote-unquote, for a new age of reason. And these commandments are a guide for a new world order. That's what's going on here. There are ten guides in eight languages around the different stones. English, Spanish, Swahili, Hindi, Hebrew, Arabic, Chinese, and Russian. And what's the very first guide? The very first guide is to maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. So right away we're talking about a stiff curbing of the entire global population. And then underneath that you have guide reproduction wisely improving fitness and diversity which is a cornerstone of eugenics, basically. See, two major planks of eugenics, and at 7 billion people, 500 million is a startling uh, sudden drop that if that was achieved would really change society quickly and probably mean a lot of cruel situations. And the rest of it lends towards an international globalist world system. I mean, that's basically what's going on with this monument. And... There are, are a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding this monument because the person who came in to set this monument up only met with the company twice. He went under the name R.C. Christian, which a lot of people have said very possibly might stand for Rose, Rosicrucian. Rosicrucian. There are other people that have tied this guy back to potentially being Ted Turner and some of the people like him, such as the Rockefellers, because it was a group of wealthy people that came together to build this anonymously it wasn't just one guy but a lot of people say it was ted turner there's some evidence for that actually in the guide booklet that came out the year after this was erected which we're about to get to but wow this, this is very interesting when you consider that the first plank of this says to maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature and now you have a new block being put in that says 2014. Well, put in some 35 years ago, a lot of its creators might still be alive. It's still a living monument. It's just been changed. And unlike other esoteric monuments that they drew from, used inspiration of and alluded to a continuity of their secret knowledge, this one spells out certain political aims uh, explicitly. And as you can see, this was a picture that was taken before. And you can even see where the little niche mark was for that square to be cut out to add that block but anyway so this is what we're looking at this is the monument here the block has been added to the side over here that has english on one side spanish on the other it's on the babylonian side this top capstone has babylonian egyptian hieroglyphics and classical greek and sanskrit so it's over on that side that this thing has been added and some people have said that this, the guide stones are not about giving us information people living now here this is actually about a message for people rebuilding in the future well that's actually not true and the reason i can say that it's not true is because this is the guidestones official booklet that they put out there's a whole lengthy explanation in here of what this is about they say it's a message for us now and they lay it all out as to what it means what it's about how we're supposed to take each one of these guides i mean it's all in here and so this is definitely not a message for some far off day after an armageddon has taken place and they're trying to rebuild the planet it's not guides for those people this is something they want us to do now 
And when you come down here to the purpose section of these guidestones, it's made very clear very quickly that these guys aren't joking around. They really do want to curb the population and institute a new world order. It says, in 1980, as these stones were being raised, the most pressing world problem was the need to control human numbers. In recent centuries, technology and abundant fuels have made possible a multiplication of humanity far beyond what is prudent or long sustainable. Yeah. Controlling our reproduction is urgently needed. It will require major changes in our attitudes and customs. Mm -hmm. Nearly every nation is now overpopulated in terms of a perpetual balance with nature. We are like a fleet of overcrowded lifeboats confronted with an approaching tempest. We're destroying our farmland. We've grown dangerously dependent on external sources for oil, metals, and other non-renewable resources. Nations such as Japan, Holland, and Haiti are even more seriously overpopulated and therefore in greater jeopardy. And it actually really creeps me out that they specifically mentioned... Japan and Haiti, considering the, the tragedies that, that have befallen those two. And, and the use of the life raft metaphor is one of ethically deciding who gets to live and die based on the triage of the lifeboat scenario. If the lifeboat's overcrowded, you've got to make decisions, uh, you know, who to let go if you're running out of food, right? It says, in these circumstances, reproduction is no longer exclusively a personal matter. Society must have a voice and some power of direction in regulating this, this vital function. The wishes of human couples are important but not paramount. The interests of present society and the welfare of future generations must be given increasing consideration as we develop mechanisms to bring rational control to our childbearing. It is extremely important that every national government develop immediately a considered population policy. The need is urgent. It should take precedence over other problems, even those relating to national defense. Population control is a global problem. The Irresponsible childbearing must be discouraged by legal and social pressures. Couple, couples who cannot provide a decent home and support for a child should not produce children to be a burden for their neighbors. I mean, you know what pisses me off about all of this, seriously, is people like Ted Turner and these rich globalists, these people are corporate rapists. And okay? they tell us they've done it for their own good, for all of our own good. Uh-huh. That guy has five kids, okay? And I don't care what decade he had them in or how many people there were at this time. He's the guy walking around saying, we need to have a one-child policy for 100 years. Boy, and that's all I'm doing is trying to fight to help save humanity. Right. To, we've got to stabilize the population. When I was born, no, there were So too, what's wrong with the population? I mean, there were too many people. That's, what, that's why we have global warming. We have global warming because too many people are using too much stuff. We've got to stabilize population on a voluntary basis. Everybody in the world has got to pledge to themselves that one or two children is it. I think two billion is about right. Right, me too. Thank one you. Exactly. One child policy. <laughs> And they're saying that poor people shouldn't be allowed to have children. Well, who's causing all of the artificial scarcity? Who's raping the environment with all of these horrible policies? And mega corporations are doing that. I'm, I am not personally doing that. You are not personally doing that. It's the system that these elites have put into place to suck off all of us <laughs> like a bunch of slaves and then turn around and say, but population is the issue. And you guys are raping the planet. No, we're not raping the planet. It's the global elite who put in this horrible system. They suppress all of the technologies of free energy that would actually make us free and in control of our own destiny and impoverish everyone with artificial scarcity in this horrifying system of murderous, parasitic industrial complexes that they've built up around all of us. Really? This is enlightened? And for those who don't know, this came out of the classical eugenics era of the late 1800s through the 1920s. It was transferred over throughout the world, including in Hitler's Nazi Germany. It went underground, but it came back after the war. The Rockefeller family set up things like the Population Council. And by 1973, 1972, it became a major plank of the United Nations. They had pushed the idea of a population bomb. They had... Uh, the Club of Rome print the limits to growth, and they figured out a model to stunt the growth of regular humanity, not just population numbers, but the economy, the use of energy, the potential for creativity and just future use, and they've contained us and walled us off 
and they are seizing the future, whatever that's going to become, and they're working on depopulating and and disenfranchising the rest of the world, population by population, particularly in the developing world, but heavily in Western society too. Okay, I skipped over this part earlier, but how the section on the purpose actually begins, the very first sentence of it is, quote, it is very probable that humanity now possesses the knowledge needed to establish an effective world government. That is how the thing freaking starts, okay? Talking about a one world government. But the problem with that is, is that this world is being run behind the scenes by a group of elite billionaire psychopaths who have screwed up the world. These are the people that have the most power, the most money, and the most influence, and look at the way the world is, and they're going to turn around and try to blame it on us, when most of us had very little say in how things are being run. These are the people that have had all the say. They've made it unfeasible to live outside their system. They've outlawed sovereignty. They've forced people to live in squalor and squander, only to point out that they have mud on their face as a criterion for why they shouldn't be allowed to go into the future. And that those who aren't wanted, which is quite a few people, should be curtailed, squeezed out. But so now we see this major change. They have added added, added a date to the Guidestones, and that date is 2014. And I mean, are what do you what do you guys think they're actually trying to say with this? I thought it was interesting too that somebody has actually drawn all over these monuments, and they've written things like "I am the light," "We are all free." People aren't accepting this because it's just so obviously transparent, okay? This is not about the good of humanity, and these people that are behind this trying to pretend like it is could have saved themselves the money it cost to put this monument up because nobody's fooled by it. Well, and that's all I'm doing is trying to fight to help save humanity.